Skill India Report 2020 is a great surprise. But this gets published every year. Since 2014, Government of India has taken this initiative of publishing Skill India Report and it has been instrumental in opening our eyes to not only job market in India but ever so industries which are part of this job market and whether they are evolving to what extent. There are cities also which we can pinpoint and say that which all cities are emerging and they keep changing every year. So Skill India 2020 report is the latest report that actually caught my attention and eye and has reached more than 3 lakh students across 28 states, 9 union territories and over 150 employers. So this is an Indian scenario that we are talking about and mind you that this particular study has uh, been taken from uh, two such sources. TAGGD which is a people strong recruitment solution brand which is the largest recruitment process outsourcing which has more than 100 clients all across 14 sectors which include big names like Pfizer, Wipro, Honeywell, Mahindra, Birla Soft, Tata Motors, Renault, Nissan, Aditya Birla Health Insurance, City, India Mart, Swiggy, Oyo, Quicker and so on so forth. It also takes into account VBOX, which is again a 3 million user annually across the globe. Across the globe, VBOX benchmarks over 3 million users annually across the globe, and which has more than Fortune 500 corporations and hundreds and large of medium enterprises to power their hiring and competency. So, VBOX national employability test was also taken into account in this in generating India skills report 2020 now confederation of Indian industry CII is also a part of this particular uh, report along with United Nations development program all India Council for technical education which we all know it by the name AICTE Association of Indian Universities, these are all part of, of the Skill India Report 2020. Now this report is a combination of an assessment of 3 lakh candidates from 3500 educational institutes across 28 states and 9 union territories. India who appeared for the VNet and 150 corporates across 9 industry sectors who participated in India hiring intense survey so this is a survey report which i'm trying to bring it to you all and it is very very important for all of us to understand now industry 4.0 is getting ready so this report is eyeing for something like that and it has all those people who are influential in all the institute the names that i have just mentioned So let us talk about few of the highlights of this particular report, India Skill Report 2020. So uh, how was employability change over the years uh, from starting from 2014 where it stood around almost 34 percentage to 2020 it has reached to 46 percentage. Now, now this is all black and white and this clearly says the employability change over last seven years which domains have more employable talent i think engineers right from 51.74 as good as what it was 52 percent in 2014 it has gotten reduced to 49 percent in 2020 mba has increased from 41 to 54 Arts from 19 to 48 percent, BCom from 27 to 47 percent, a substantial one. BSc from almost 42 to 34, it has gone down. MCA 43 to 25 percent, ITI 46 to the data is not available because for last two years, I think the ITI ITI is going uh, for a, a sudden change, you know, on a sudden transition. 
so it the figures may not be available polytechnic from almost 12% to 32% so there are a lot of jobs available from of polytechnic b farm has again reduced from 55 to 45% how was the hiring intent changed every year how it is from 2014 it was just 2% 2015 it took a jump 23% substantially came down in 2016 to 14% and now 2020 is seeing the least amount of hiring the hiring intent across all sectors if you see that the banking and financial and the pharma sectors uh, the healthcare and the telecom which was there prevailing in 2014 has taken a toll a taken a circle and now in 2020 the banking and financial services insurance bpo kpo ites internet businesses has taken over so clearly a domino effect which is seen uh, due to this pandemic uh, has also seen the same sector which are beneficial especially the bpo kpo ites and internet businesses so which sectors have hired the most i think the online sectors are doing good but as soon as the pandemic will go definitely there will be a lot of retail e-commerce bfsi is one thing banking financial services is one thing which is clearly emerged out as the biggest common sector right from 2014 to 2020 which domain has hired the most number of candidate i think the undergraduate or equivalent 2014 it was 6% 2020 it becomes 8% iti 6 to 3 again it is it is reducing that's the reason it is it is not showing uh, in the above graph which we have discussed earlier polytechnic again it has come down from 8 to 3 pg or equivalent is from 6 to 6% to 13% MBA or PG DM diploma courses in the management from 22% to 17% uh, marginal decline there graduates BCA BBA BCom or BSc etc from 24% to a 2% growth 26% engineers I think 28 to 3% growth 31% which states have the maximum hiring activity now uh, in 2000 18 2017 2015 if you say then the western part of india has grown whereas gujarat is the third highest hiring in 2018 delhi had the second highest hiring in 2014 to 2019 maybe but i think it has gone uh, the shift has gone to tamil nadu and andhra more so in 2020 as uh, with the formation of telangana so uh, quite a revelation but one thing is for sure that no one particular state has is ruling so the shift is happening but majorly the western part of india has emerged out as the largest 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 job attractors uh, in in all over india as you take note of india report 2020 we all know that there are f certain uh, you know studies surveys which are put into a graph now this graphical representation would not be that difficult to interpret only thing is that we all need to understand is there is certain emergence of few employability skills employability test involves the various uh, organizations those who are involved in generating this particular survey and the kind of institutes participating they are all very well established and well entrenched institute of india's and they are all contributing to the factual figures of what is happening in terms of employability and how youths of today are shaped up it is also important for all of us to understand that there is definitely a skill gap now wanting you all to understand that there is a demand and supply and that's how the labor market or the job market operates but there is definitely three things which which are clearly clearly a big indicator of why this skill india report is in place yes first is the qualification the second is the experience and third is the skill so all three if they are in place i think the job market works and augurs well for all who have been trying their level best to prepare 
their best and get involved into the employability which are the states with maximum supply of employable talent if you take uh, top 3 states and if you take into account right from 2014 then punjab haryana, haryana and delhi the major shift in 2014 was north then it it has seen the central india and suddenly the south india where andhra has taken in 2016 and sometimes it was west bengal also 2017 2018 again andhra came back andhra is still there in 2020 andhra has is not there but maharashtra tamil nadu and uttar pradesh are clearly seen there in comparison to what men and women are in terms of job participation i think with men it is it was 71% right the employability was 30% which has uh, increased to 77% but the employability is 46% to men in comparison to women right from 2014 to 2020 that i am speaking about 29% of women participation was there now it has reduced to 23% and the employability overall percentage is 42% to 47% so there has been more of more women actually contributing to the employability but the retention is a question mark here let us also try and understand the key findings of the report let us take one important aspect now the industry 1.0 mechanization steam power and weaving loom to industry 2.0 the mass production assembly line electrical energy industry 3.0 has seen a lot of automation computers and electronics but industry 4.0 4.0 that we are talking about is 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 going to be more of cyber physical systems internet of things and networks which is today so there is a shift happening and it is very inevitable of the fact that the entire world is changing towards automation now the key takeaways of this particular report is from our assessment of the talent available the vbox national employability test employability test what it speaks is employability of india's youth has remained stagnant for the past 3 years lingering around 46% who are job ready the state of employability has not improved over the last few years implying the need for more robust action so there has to be more of employability getting employable is most important so that is what it is need of the r which the clear with the report clearly reflects mba holders have taken over the slot of the highest employable cohort among the various course graduates with an employability score of 54% so irrespective of the whatever background that you are coming from be it an engineer b farm b com ba or polytechnics i think the mba have a slightly better uh, stake in terms of employability and it has increased to 15% for last maybe uh, a couple of years candidates from maharashtra tamil nadu and uttar pradesh were more employable than any other states that means the amount of employability test which are which are uniformly you know conducted uh, from these three states uh, i think there it they these three states were able to attract more number of employment than compared to any other states so maybe mumbai hyderabad and pune playing a wider role interestingly while maharashtra and tamil nadu have jumped up the ladder by more than seven position the city of hyderabad is entirely a new addition to the listing when compared with the past few years data just because of the Tal- telangana happening there male and female participant as we can uh, we could you know gauge by the earlier slide that the marginal percentage of uh, men have has come down in terms of employability but the women participation has definitely increased the figures for candidates seeking internship opportunities with organizations remained alike as of the last year's record at 85% but i think tamil nadu uh, and hyderabad telangana has has attracted lot of students here the awareness of the government of Nash, india's national apprenticeship uh, 
uh, scheme NAPS 2015 among students is not very encouraging only 60% of the students were aware of this particular scheme so I think with this report and uh, students who are aware of this would take a note of and maybe get aware of NAPS 2015 scheme as well bringing more light is the 56 percent of employers are likely to increase hiring this year however the harrowing portrait of low women participation in jobs persists with less than 25 percent women at work despite the employability of the women reaching at par with men in comparison with the previous year e-commerce and bfsi are the industry that are expected to ramp up their hiring according to this report and MBAs, BAs and BCom courses employability over 45 percent individually for each course has been marked here. Candidates with one to five years of experience continue to remain in maximum demand over 40 percent while freshers make up for only 15 percent of the overall talent demand. Basis the educational qualification and demand engineers have been expected to be hired the most 30 percent closely followed by general graduate like ba bcom or bsc 26 percent which is four percent down which is in tandem with the hiring trend posted by bfsi e-commerce bpo kpo its the skills which employers seems to emphasize on while screening candidates are domain knowledge adaptability to the environment learning agility and positive attitude the four skills which every recruiter has an eye to and this should be noted by all the job seekers in terms of quality of the talent available 42 percent of employers say most job seekers satisfy their requirement but majority of them that is 53 percent say that some meet the ask the findings heighten the concern over gender parity as the intent for 2020 reflects a likely hiring ratio of 71 is to 29 for male to female candidates with the widest disproportions expected to be seen in the auto sector quite interestingly the survey indicated the rising role of gigs in the economy at 13 percent share in the overall hiring intent by employment type job portals professional network and social media and internal referrals stood out as the topmost channels used for finding the right talent so this has to be noted by the job seekers whereas tamil nadu karnataka and maharashtra are the state states preferred the most by employers for hiring talent also about 50 percent of the employers acknowledge the role of government initiated programs in recruit in recruitments of which almost 9 in 10 employers admit that candidates meet their requirements. So this is good. The country is eyeballing the opportunity to make it in a global top 5 list by 2020. That is what the proposal was. And if we are closely monitoring this Skill India report, then it is definitely going to progress by next couple of years if we have taken this as a task. I'm sure that the millennials that we talk about, the country's big and small economic pattern and trends are all highly impacted by India's largest demographic cohort, that, that is millennials. So if you take the age uh, bracket of 18 to 35, I think 47% of the total population of India will fall under this. So India itself getting qualified as the youth capital, the millennials contribute nearly one half one half 47 percent of the country's working population and will likely to continue to remain the largest chunk of the indian workforce now this is something which is very very important demographically to understand what the millennials are and what their contribution would significantly uh, make india to propel with at this point in time now, India's formally trained workforce, which stands at merely 2.3%, in comparison to economies like South Korea, which are the mammoth, like 96%. So, the you know, nearest if you are comparing to South Korea, then we are way, way lagging behind. And if that is to be bridged, we need to understand where, where we are going, what we are doing. Skill India report is generated to to know exactly what is happening here in India with the employment, employability, employment, 
employment market as well as who's responding to all of these are its millennial the youth brigand falling under the age bracket of 18 to 35 a critical question arises from the skill india report 2020 is are students job ready india is widely known for enjoying its demographic dividend but Almost half of India's current population is over 1.2 billion people are under the age of 26 years and the median age of the country projected to be 29 years by 2020. So almost stepping into 2021 we know that the average Indian age would be somewhere around 29 to 30. So India is making for the youngest country in the world. However, to optimally leverage this remarkable demographic, a country needs to continuously find ways to keep its manpower skilled so as to meet the demand from its industries while also seizing global opportunities by supplying talent to the international job markets. As a step further in the direction of improving the skills of the youth, we have been conducting an annual assessment of students to understand the kind and level of skills they possess and what can be done to better equip them for upcoming job market trends. The VBOX National Employability Test Survey, which was conducted for the seventh consecutive time this year, has been instrumental in its approach as well as reach for bringing forth the reflection of a youth's talent and their proficiency to meet the industry needs. The VNet or VBOX National Employability Test Survey that captures the state of the talent supply side was conducted from July 2019 to November 2019 with more than 3 lakh students from varied educational backgrounds participating in the test. The VBOX National Employability Test is a scientifically drafted assessment that serves as a guide to assess the talent pool available and test their employability from the perspective of their readiness to join the industry. This test was taken online and was accessible from mobiles, tablets, computers as well as laptops. We approached more than 3500 educational institutes from 28 states and 9 union territories of the country, making this one of the India's most notable employability tests conducted so far. Also to bring to you all notices, the last three years we have seen the same amount of jobs being taken by the students. So almost to the tune of 46% the students have shown that they are job ready. To open the VBOX National Employability Test Survey Analysis for 2020, let us look at the results for overall employability of students. About 46% of students in this year's survey were found to be employable or ready to take up jobs, while the figures show a marginal decline from those of the previous year. The overall trend is still positive in comparison with the past six years result. This can be attributed to the rising efforts and skill development by the government and academic institutions. However, there is a still lot to be done covered on the ground in order to make all students employable and requires holistic and concentrated efforts from all stakeholders, the government, industry, academia and students. So for past six years, the figures are 33% to 46% when it comes to 2014-2019 data. Management graduates are most employable while engineers witness a dip in employability score. When analyzed from the perspective of most employable candidate as per the courses, MBA students clearly stood out in the race with 54% score. This new trend has whipped that of the last two years where their employability consistently remained under 40%. Surprisingly, this year the score for BTEC students have declined significantly. The net employability score for BTEC was 49 as against 57 registered last year. The decline is reflected across all trades of engineering. MCA graduates have also witnessed a decline in employability by almost 18%. The decline in technical and computer related courses paints an upsetting picture for India, which is widely considered a hub of IT professionals. Moreover, the industry is fast moving towards the adoption of advanced technologies such as AI, 
data analytics robotics ar vr and automation which is opening a plethora of new job opportunities in the market the declining quality of resources would leave these opportunities unused and hit the productivity of the industry so across the domain if you see that the jobs have been almost increasing the employability is isn't but the jobs are there but the employability isn't engineering courses almost all courses are witnessing good amount of employability now the city with the highest number of employability is again maharashtra followed by tamil nadu uttar pradesh andhra pradesh karnataka telangana has has emerged a real real uh, great opportunity for all the students followed by delhi delhi is dipping down rajasthan west bengal and gujarat gujarat is somehow way distant far another aspect of uh, india skill report 2020 is when there is this male is to female almost both are equally occupied they are given equal chances and there are there is definitely lot of employability seen but due to lack of consistency shown from the weaker sex because of the reason that they are not able to pull on for a longer version uh, in corporates there is an iteration rate more seen in the female than male also extension of this the study clearly says that uh, there is an ambiguity in information overload acting as deterrence preparedness of students to decide career path is a big question and that's the reason you have lot of overlap majority of students feel they are well informed to make career choices almost 86% of students cite that they are well equipped with the information to make better career choices this is mostly facilitated by the information they get from their educational institute and about 55% of educational sites so skill training and internship if you talk about then there are various aspect like skill trainings internship opportunities interaction with the companies career counseling career fairs internships opportunities i think what support uh, is required major ask from the student side it ranges from 32% to 37% as you go from what support do you, uh, do the student require as to make informed choices about career to what support will uh, they like to get from your from the educational institute to what support will they like to get from educational institute to enable them to prepare themselves for an opportunity in the employment domain so this is a gist of it support sought by students are mostly skills training and internship opportunities together making over 65% so that that's a significant percentage educational institutes and skilling eco- ecosystem is required the two major areas where students require help from educational institute and skilling ecosystem to enable them to make better career choices while also equipping them with industry relevant skills and knowledge to ready them for a job market additionally students have also laid importance upon the interaction with companies which is deemed necessary to stay updated on the job requirement all in all students feel the necessity to connect with the industry to learn and explore their knowledge horizons to further highlight the importance of industry connections a great majority of students believe that apprenticeship of 3 to 12 months will improve their employability to a great extent national apprenticeship scheme naps 2015 is surprising as the rest 40% do not have information so only 60% of the data shows that students are aware 40% which is a significant uh, percentage where the students failed to know the awareness of naps and their advantage in upskilling and maybe getting job ready now this has resulted in many students missing out of the opportunity thereby raising concerns over the outreach and marketing of the government initiative programs and information dissemination by educational institutes about internship opportunities internship and projects are going to play a very very important role in all all Uh, graduates so national apprenticeship scheme naps awareness should be more than what it is observed in the report 
Now candidates preferences, if you see uh, the VN, WNET, the employability test VBOX survey apart from assessing the students on the skills and support required to enhance their careers also extends to understand the preferences in terms of internship and work location and salary expectation. So majority of the students seek internship which is, is very valid is uh, Maharashtra and Tamil Nadu are the preferred state. Of course, Telangana is the most preferred. It has now become because the kind of offers, internship offers, it has to you know, give overall in comparison to other states. The salary range is somewhere uh, more than 55% of students would like to have salary above 2.6 lakhs per annum. Moving towards the end of the VBOX National Employability Test Survey, we have observed that overall employability has remained stagnant throughout the previous few years, which is approximately square score of 45%. This signifies that there has been no substantial improvement in the skilling ecosystem in the country. It is important to realize that as and the world shifts towards a knowledge-oriented economy, Businesses increasingly adopt new technologies and the government strives to make its industries and talents stronger. The skill development framework cannot remain too far behind. The supply side needs to focus on the new age skills development and especially in tandem with the industry demands, lest it could cripple the entire demand supply outlook. Further, students need to build an attitude of learning and accepting challenges rather than just passing and getting degrees. To this view, the government needs to monitor the enforcement of all its initiative and operational efficiency of the training. Now, this report vividly brings about few influencers, few academicians and few professors which are responsible for various, various things, various aspects of uh, Skill India report. One being Professor Dr. Ashwini Kumar Sharma, Dean School of Engineering, COE, Kaziranga University, Assam. He says the VBOX National Employability Test WNET is a great platform for the students to understand their skill sets and competencies. By this, they can get insight to prepare for industry needs and work on specific area for improvement. He says that he's, he was very sure that this initiative will benefit the students of all the courses and lead them to a better workforce of the future. Dr. Harivansh Chaturvedi, Director BIM Tech, Greater Noida, ZH College of Engineering and Technology Executive President speaks about his idea on how it is shaped up. He says that the road to India becoming a 5 trillion economy traverses through transformation of Indian education. Recruiters want skills, competencies and preparedness of the young talent for workplaces. Outdated curriculum and obsolete pedagogies being used in our higher education are not delivering desired skills among degree holders. Exponential and disruptive technologies have created a situation where our educated youth are not finding jobs in modern industries due to lack of required skills. We need to develop new skills among youth which will be in demand during next decade or so. There is no authentic manpower requirement data available which is based on the future requirement of the industry for the next 5 to 10 years. Chandrasekhar Shripada, Executive Director Human Capital and Leadership Initiatives, Indian School of Business says, employability given our bargaining and young human capital has to reach the proportion of national emergency. Government alone can't handle this challenge. Here are three things that India Inc. can do. Make skill upgradation a board agenda and CEO KPI. Second is make analysts and investors to ask and review what skills a company has identified as obsolete and how is skill upgradation being provided for those who will lose jobs due to old skills. And third is mandate companies to partner with relevant skilling institutes or create where there are none and incentivize employees to learn new skills. 
5 trillion economy will be a pipe dream without creating relevant new age skills at scale dr priya r swami narayan dean faculty of it and cs professor and director piet mca principal bca parul institute of computer application vadodara says that she would like to congratulate vbox and the entire india skill report team for publishing india skill report and for reaching over more than 3 lakh students across 28 states 9 union territories and more than 100 employers vbox helps recruiters for finding best talent using validated reliable and standardized test for pre hiring and learning needs assessment she says that she was very sure that the india skill report will also be helpful to higher educational institutions for revision of their curriculum based on the requirement of global industry and current trends of industries rekha sethi director general aima says doubling the economy in 5 years demands an exponential increase in quantity and quality of skilled labor a digitizing economy requires everyone to work with digital technologies and business models a basic proficiency in using mobile cloud internet platforms robotics and ai is required by all india has a lot of catching up to do in that respect employability is a function of employers investing in training the existing and the prospective employees this is particularly true at a time when business technologies and methods are undergoing fundamental change the biggest challenge is to get employers and employees to invest in continuous learning professor dr vishal y doshi head training and associate professor i i i c coordinator rajkot says rk university is a place where change happens our students are challenged and motivated to change their perspectives towards education by our faculties our faculties constantly change their teaching pedagogies and instructional approaches to match industry requirements and student needs rk university feels privileged to be partner with vbox by contributing in the development of india skill report 2020 the development of india skill report 2020 rk university focuses on transformational experience of the students through cutting edge courses research industry relevant activities and fulfilling the demand by providing quality students vbox employability skill test measures the ability and skills of students in the area aptitude behavioral and domain knowledge and helps the educators for bridging the gaps between academia and industry rk university is conducting vbox test from last 3 years and finding continuous improvement and results of students and quality of test which also is helpful to students in their final placement campus we look forward to have such more reports for continuous improvement and the field of education for the betterment of society dr harsh purohit dean fms wisdom and law rajasthan speaks Vbox national employability test has grown in popularity as the stakeholders get to understand the merit of testing the students on all desired parameters. The Vbox team has been working relentlessly to promote learning, testing and skill enhancement which positively contribute to the employability and therefore in interest of the nation. At Bhansthali Vidyapeet the world's largest residential university for women's education nurturing women for leadership roles since 1935 we believe that education employment and empowerment have a strong connect and delighted to partner with vbox in bringing out the skill india report 2020 it is wonderful to note that over the time thousands of girl students from bhansthali have participated in the vbox test and we wish all the success to vbox in future endeavors anil sachdev founder and ceo school of inspired leadership soil india says our higher education system needs to be reimagined 
we need to develop students who develop their capacity to learn through introspection reflection and source the childlike curiosity within themselves to acquire the skills needed for the new world even as we learn how to deploy artificial intelligence robotics and machine learning and embrace the power of big data and digital we have to develop empathy and mindfulness so that our students think holistically and work to make our world better we need to free our higher education system of all controls and make this sector attractive for investments by the world's best universities india will never become a developed country unless we completely reform higher education now this report vividly brings about few influencers few academicians and few professors which are responsible for various various thing various aspects of uh, skill india report so these are the few influencers opinion makers in the education industry who have seen right from the bottom to top how education system in india is shaping up what they have to say about skill india and v v box but it has to do more on the general criteria of how youths can be empowered towards more employability effective employability where india actually sees herself shining above all challenges which are prevailing at this point in time in the education industry india skill report also has a greater insight towards india hiring intent 2020 and the demand story is very very good despite that india has gone and the world has gone this pandemic the jobs outlook 2020 looks to be still better increasing globalization demographic changes emerging technologies regulatory framework and geopolitical scenario will significantly influence india's job landscape in the coming years with initiatives such as skill india or efforts in the direction of investing in infrastructural changes ramping up of micro entrepreneurship models and boosting the startup ecosystem the government of india is clearly laying out signs that it is up for reinventing the business case for india in addition the rapid changing technology environment is reshaping entire organization structures and operations it has led to the rise of new business models disrupting the incumbents altered customer behavior reform service delivery methods and operations and most importantly it has changed the way people work some striking examples that instantly come to the mind are swiggy oyo big basket ola and lenskart the brands which have revolutionized the entire business ecosystem As we head towards a knowledge driven and tech enabled workplace repetitive and low skill jobs are increasingly being automated using technologies like robotics artificial intelligence and machine learning the key emerging digital technologies are creating new arrangements for labor market called the gig economy so it is therefore necessary that India Inc identifies and understands the changing job landscape and the emerging new roles due to these disruptions further it needs to look at the skills that its workforce currently possesses and the skills that it will need in the future so that leaders can devise solutions to develop these new skills it is observed that despite a huge population of energetic youth in the country today the industry is complaining of scarce talent to understand this problem better and answer what can be done we conducted an online survey the india hiring intent 2020 with more than 150 employers across nine industries to understand the challenges in hiring the candidates they want The leaders also shared their views on the kind of roles or skills the organizations would seek in their prospective employees. 
where do they plan to hire and what channels would they prefer to reach out the candidates so the 2020 survey result the hiring india hiring intent 2020 survey result says that positive hiring outlook despite the sluggish economy 56 percent of the india industry employers industry employers in 2020 survey reported a positive outlook on the hiring and about 28 percent maintained the status quo the figures however dropped this year as compared to 2019 where 64% of respondents reflected a positive intent while 25% of respondents mentioned they do not intend to increase or decrease their hiring state and the industry which are going to pioneer in, in the hiring intent will be e-commerce internet business to the tune of 60% banking and financial service and insurance bfsi to the tune of 35 percent software hardware and it will be 12 percent bpo kpo and ites to the tune of 30 percent automotive five percent manufacturing again zero to five percent pharma healthcare ten percent telecom and lead eight percent others diversified will take up to the tune of five percent more 67 percent of smaller organizations show a positive hiring intent now on hiring spree e-commerce and bfsi to be the job creation engine in 2020 who will be getting hired more then yet again this year mostly the candidate with one to five years of experience are in demand and 40 percent employees across industry said that overall hiring is expected to increase and the demand for the freshers has been declining only 15 person in comparison to last three years hiring intent by education domain engineers are expected to be hired about 31 person closely followed by general graduates that those are 25 person mba would definitely be of a greater importance the overall demand for the engineers has increased from last year by around 10 person mba and postgraduate student as compared to previous year in contrast to last year, the demand for the industrial training institute and polytechnic pass outs has dropped significantly. So engineering graduates, there's a good news for them. What is getting hired is positive attitude and soft skills are must. And when asked about the skills that employers seek while hiring, all employers explicitly mention the requisite of positive attitude in the candidate with the sense that a candidate with a positive outlook towards job and learning is more likely to do better in her or his professional career and his or her counterparts. The unanimous voice of HR experts as per discussion during the Decoding Jobs 2019 the think tank roundtable series also placed a lot of importance on the attitude of candidate further qualitative findings of the discussion held during the decoding jobs 2019 the think tank roundtable series are mentioned in subsequent section of this report as well now the employers mention what is of most most important highlight which we all need to pay attention to is the employers mentioned top five preferred skills in a candidate while hiring and those five preferred skills are positive attitude adaptability learning agility learning ability is different than learning agility how agile we are to the new learning the new technological learning that are coming our way domain expertise is something that is very very going into the micro level and asking for an engineer let's say if it he or she is a, a mechanical engineer then the designing part if if the candidate is having a great expertise in the designing part will be what uh, be minutely taken note of and the most important part is interpersonal skills which is a larger skills and which has smaller skills into it which has leadership listening communication taking initiative planning organizing problem solving decision making and all higher order skills comes under this particular skills call as interpersonal skills so i repeat positive attitude adaptability learning agility domain expertise and interpersonal skills are the most five preferred skills in a candidate while hiring which most of the employers have mentioned upcoming new skills uh, would be 
the employer cited the increasing role of data science and analysis and social media marketing in the coming 5 years in the industry and this is due to ever increasing role of advanced technology so emerging job areas or skills in next 5 years would be data science and analysis digital marketing robotics process automation human centered design and compliance so five job areas for next 5 years now satisfaction with talent hired would be 57% of the responded in the survey felt that only some or very few of the job seekers satisfy their skills requirements so there is a lot to be done in particular very specific to what has been asked from the industry and what is that as a gap which every aspiring job aspirant needs to take care and note of right so how many job seekers were able to satisfy the skill only 53% of the employees feel that some job seekers satisfy their requirement so 53% that means a lot is to be done here so women participation is a big concern because the gender parity will exist in the year 2020 as well now uh, what uh, it clearly says is 2019 there were around 75% of the the gender parity 75% 25% now which has got uh, reduced and it has come to 71 to 29 as male to female ratio right the gender diversity uh, is seen all across uh, all industry percentage hires by employment type about 80% of the workforce constituted by permanent employees while gig stand at 13% so contractual and apprentices uh, or freelancing takes the other half now preferred employee type would be uh, again going for a different nature where telecom allied pharma it and other diversified taking the major chunk employees prefer permanence over short term in, uh, engagements 55% of permanent hires and 35% as compared to uh, in fact the automotive sector witness a larger chunk of employees in contractual roles about 35% as compared to 55% permanent hires so the reports talk about hiring gig overall 13% of the gig workforce across all industry tier 2 and 3 cities would be hired more hiring by city increase increasing employment opportunities in tier 2 and 3 cities due to increasing gig workforce now the most important is hiring by source channel if you take into account the consultants uh, where 16% earlier in 2019 which has reduced to 14% campus hire from 10 to 11% so it will go a marginal uh, you know percentage higher internal referral will be reduced from 19 to 14% professional working and social media uh, will definitely increase substantially from 8% to 15% company websites will be again uh, be taking a major focus from 6 to 10% job portals not great difference but 28% to 21 so it is reducing job fairs perhaps would be major your focus from 2 to 4% direct walk in does not change much 8 to 9% and others does not change so uh, job portals internal references and professional networking and social media remain most used channels to find candidate so now most of the job aspirant would have an answer where to seek job from nearly 50% employees recruit through government initiated programs as well and are happy with the skills of the candidates so that means whatever the government scheme which are approaching the institute or the colleges should be taken seriously now the top 5 states ever for for where the maximum hiring will be done is indicated as tamil nadu karnataka maharashtra andhra pradesh and delhi so west north and south uh, will be the chunk of highest recruitment in the coming years india skill reports also talk about the think tank series discussions which were held with more than 200 senior industry leaders across major metro cities in the country including new delhi mumbai Bangalore and Chennai between August to November 
and what they have to say is the ask from india's killing sector what is holding the india inc back ask stands for attitude skill and knowledge attitude is being focused majorly the skill sets of course the requisite skill sets as per the uh, industry specific demand and the knowledge the domain knowledge is is ever ever so important to bank on now what are the other things that we can talk about about this india skill report 2020 and the think tank series is the attitude preference for select specialization courses or degrees a large share of india's current working population choose safe courses like engineering btech be management mba bba medical bds or mbbs etc driven by parents expectation and influence this was because of the prevalent opinion about these subject areas having steady job availability with a good salary while the trend has gradually started shifting towards newer courses over the past few years the maximum focus among the specialized university in india continues to be towards technical courses pursuing paycheck over true passion when choosing a professional course at a time of setting out on their professional journeys most students graduates face the dilemma of focusing more on income from conventionally stable jobs over what they really would wish to pursue in their professional careers a 2015 survey by online job portal monster said that about half the respondents admitted that they had a job that did not meet their true passion and about one third of the remaining half admitted that they were working for a good pay scale and not their passion in such cases it has been observed that many people start to lose interest in their jobs resulting in lower productivity and low to no willingness for upskilling inclination towards white collar jobs unlike other successful economies like the us or china the indian job market did not move gradually from primary that is agrarian to secondary which is industrial and then to the tertiary which is service sector the rapid jump to tertiary sector jobs and related rise in remunerations during the late 1990s and early 2000s led people to think rather highly of white collar jobs than blue collared leaving people to find the later less dignified as a result many fresh graduates have faced unemployment because they wish to start their career with a white collar jobs and not comparatively higher pay packet even if they may lack the relevant skills millennial job hopping behavior india is home to one of the largest millennial populaces in the world and as a result job preferences and attitudes are largely driven by millennials demands and expectations millennial workers have been subject to several studies and some of the key pattern observed in their behavior have raised concerns among the employer communities while they want challenging jobs and almost despite monotonous job roles as they tend to get bored with similar work a report has brought out the fact that an that on average they stay within a given role for a maximum of 3 years resulting them in gaining half baked skills and experience that employers would desire there is a high attrition rate among the millennials workforce therefore earning them the title of job hoppers skilling and knowledge questionable quality of education one of the chief concerns of skilling sector in india has been the quality of skilling and education at india's academic institutions it is ironic for a country like india where people place the highest value in quality of education and emphasize enrollment of their children in top skilling institutions that no indian varsity would make it in the top 100 universities list by times higher education world reputation rankings 
obsolete curriculum at institutions while the curriculum being taught at schools are dated skills education in schools in schools or graduation courses at colleges or universities lack the connect with industry and market usage it is critical for our schools and college curriculum to keep pace with the fast changing job marketplace with technological advancement and globalization however most institutions review their curriculum and skilling programs often without considering the contemporary requirements of industry for instance AICT has revised the curriculum for engineering and technical courses 2018-19 onwards and has also included mandatory internship courses social and industrial to help students connect with industry requirement this revamping is being done after 7 long years in the wake of industry shouting for lack of knowledge and skills the benefit of this revision are yet to be realized but other courses should also be given a thought on these lines now lack of focus on practical or life skills the skills imparted at most academic institutions are not relevant to prepare a candidate for a job most higher level education institutions have been providing degrees to students without focusing much on imparting specialized skill sets a study by metal shows that less than 5% engineers have the analytical skills necessary for software engineering jobs in product startups employers complain that many graduates they hire are deficient in basic skills such as writing problem solving and critical thinking that college leaders and their faculties consistently rank among the most important goals of an undergraduate education additionally indian schools have been inclined to focus more on theoretical knowledge and scoring overlooking the aspects of imparting necessary life skills to students right at the primary or secondary levels as per the findings of Pratham annual status of education which stands as the acronym ASER 2017 report only 40% person, 14 to 18 year olds can calculate the price of shirts sold at a 10% discount and less than 60% person can read time for from an analog clock deficient in reskilling and formal training efforts there has been a visible gap in formal training of graduates because of the prevalent disconnect between the industry and training institute in india as opposed to their counterparts in the us which is 52% uk 68% germany 75% japan 80% south korea 96% a mere 4.69 of india's total workforce have received formal skilling as per union ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship data even though businesses are gradually steering towards reskilling or upskilling efforts for the employed workforce to keep pace with the changing technological landscape and the arrival of new utility tools the destination is far and the route is long on the job reskilling and upskilling initiative will need more proactive than reactive approach in order to better equip the personnel for their altering role the recent nascom report states that about 40% of india's workforce must be reskilled over the next 5 years to cope with emerging trends and shifts in the jobs landscape causing many current jobs to become non existent due to emerging technologies like ai iot machine learning and blockchain societal and policy related concern alarmingly low participation of women in the workforce one of the prime factors that has upset the equilibrium of the talent demand and supply in india and it is that women have constantly leaving the job market over the past years as per international labor organization the percentage share of female participation in the workforce fell from nearly 34% in 1999 to 2000 to about 27% in 2011 to 
reaching a historic low of about 23 percent in 2017 or 18. In a growing population where women constitute 50 percent of the total size, upskilling women as a priority agenda could change the paradigm not just for women but for the society. Because with every woman who gets empowered, there is an associated family that gets empowered and influenced. Asynchronized practices at institutions across states. While most of the Indian youth long for global opportunities, India's specialization and vocational training institutes have not been able to impart skills at par with international standards. There is also a severe regional imbalance in, in quality of institutions. In the 2017 rankings of the 100 best institutions by the HRD ministry, 67 are from 8 states. So, not only is uniformity of skill education missing across institutions, but there is also a serious lack of harmonization in states and central government policy on consistency development and institutions. Non-government and non-lucrative incentive models with, with over 20 million students graduating every year that source AISHE report for 2016 and an increase in creation of low paid jobs, India has been facing a big challenge in terms of incentive plans and salary models. Center for Monitoring Indian Economy CIMEA found that private sector salary growth in the country in 2018-19 was the worst in 10 years since 2009 and 10, wherein the percentage share of salaries and total sales revenue of the organization fell for the first time in seven years. There has been a shortfall in the regulatory efforts to incentivize the workforce through a favorable model and therefore the situation has been increasingly pushing talented youth away from the low paying job markets. Non-availability of a unified information exchange platform presently india is experiencing a massive skill gap where 65 to 75 percent of the 15 million youngsters entering the workforce every year are either found unemployable or still not ready for jobs the situation is made worse with no information or data available to skill seekers on what courses are available which ones are best among valued by employers what is the average salary expectation for the specific job role etc etc if youths are to be really employable rather than generating employment, I think academia, government and industry play a very vital role. For academia, learner-driven curriculum in fitment with upcoming jobs skills requirement, developing proper facilities in terms of laboratories, faculty, books, environment, etc. Building curriculum which builds the foundation for appropriate ask attitude skills and knowledge towards work and career learn unlearn and relearn should be the attitude imbibed in the students right from the school time making knowledge more practical oriented rather than theoretical career counseling for students engage invite more industry people to campus focusing on developing entrepreneurial and behavioral skills other than technical skills for government, it will be creating a central digital platform for delivery of real-time data and insights on jobs and talent available. Co-funded infrastructure to be built for better education and job fulfillment. Standardized compensation for each job role. Incentivization for companies who are creating mass jobs and for organization with a 100% women workforce. Now for industry, it is co-creating curriculum and supporting train the trainer programs, channeling CSR funds to skilling, providing skills training to freshers and reskilling experienced employees, increasing duration of internship and assessing certifying after completion, make jobs more creative and challenging. Creating a sustainable, inclusive and equitable employment framework in terms of opportunities, salary, benefits, social security and benefits for women. Frequenting campus visits to let students have a real view of what skills are in demand 
and providing career counseling for students now this is a nationwide communication campaign to build awareness of government initiative when they have a common agenda of making a youth employable rather than getting an employment and what industry leaders uh, speak about is a ganesh head hr shriram transport finance says that the its industry flourished in india till the recent past mostly on account of cost arbitrage which is no more the case the business model has come of age by moving from mere process efficiency to innovation and redefining consumer experience to support it the college education curriculum must create advanced skills in ai analytics etc the bigger thrust however must be on reskilling and upskilling mid career professional in new age technology so that we have enough trained resources for the value added roles that the industry requires there is a need for political will to move from mere employment generation to allowing industry the elbow room to realign their talent strategy towards adopting disruptive technologies the industry needs to invest in upskilling the resources in new technology without being concerned about immediate returns Ajay Bhatt President Global Human Resource Intas Pharmaceutical Limited says that healthcare industry globally is undergoing a massive transformation in terms of technology access governance therapy and commercial consideration talent will continue to dominate the transformation agenda in terms of current and future skills as the core skills will need to be strengthened while acquiring new skills Amar Deepika Kashyap President Group HR Ashok Piramal Group says that transition from a sellers market to a consumer centric market drew sharp focus of industry on the need to build a flexible and efficient supply chain for timely delivery of quality products and product variants the importance of providing the customer with a high quality service experience got recognized as a major differentiator for market growth and sustenance as manual interventions for strengthening the supply chain had limited impact it becomes imperative to introduce new age technologies such as digitalization ai machine learning robotics vr and ar for adding value to different segments of the supply chain Amit Malik Chief People Operations and Customer Service Officer Aviva Life Insurance India Limited has to say that he believes that the life insurance industry will see consolidation in the coming years and will witness investment and research on consumer behavior to tap into the largely untapped pool of insurable population the sector is likely to witness rapid digitization though will continue to remain a high touch business there is going to be huge demand for skills like data analytics digital social media new technologies and mergers and acquisition organizations need to invest in building a proposition that is in tune with the needs of the millennials wherein they can choose and select features that best suit their needs there is an urgent need to invest in upskilling talent to provide customers with capable financial advisory to best suit the customer need for every life stage archana bhaskar chro and head corporate communication dr reddy's laboratory says even at the current rate of growth india's pharma sector is estimated to reach usd 80 to 90 billion by 2030 and create 1 to 2 million additional jobs for the country in the same period a key differentiator here will be the sales function where the ratio of medical representative to doctors is expected to rise significantly given increasing competition in the organized sector Sales force excellence will be key to winning in doing so sales leaders will have to transform the sales organization's mindsets habits and culture Dr P V Ramana Murthy executive vice president global head human resource the Indian hotels company limited Taj group of hotels says that Jack Welch in an annual report of General Electric 2020 said if the rate of change on the outside exceeds the rate of change on the inside the end is near the KPMG and Fiki recently published a report on the impact of digital in the travel and tourism industry 
it emphasized that hospitality brands are embracing technology and are transforming into experience platforms while automating operations however the hospitality sector is highly human intensive and would continue to be predominantly driven by manual processes disruptive technologies such as ai ml robotics etc will definitely impact the way we look at skilling in the industry faisal nadeem sayed director people services apac expedia group says the e-commerce industry is in a manner of speaking not only at the forefront of the cutting edge technology but also is leading in terms of latest innovation and disruption thus three big skill sets that one can forecast relate to data sciences artificial intelligence and virtual reality these skills are and will be used to virtually recreate new jobs some of which we don't even know what they will look like thus the entire e-com space is undergoing transformation and will emerge stronger because of all dramatic changes that we are creating balachandra nv executive director hr ashok lilan says that jobs in future in india will be less permanent more semi permanent unique skills will command a premium whereas low skill jobs will cease to exist redundancy in skills will be rapid and unique skills will become industry agonistic for example retail selling skills may become relevant in auto parts sales and maybe in construction material going forward technology will overtake but human connect will still be in demand Now Gautam Kar head talent acquisition Wipro Limited says the challenges being faced in IT industry talent landscape today are the dynamic nature of business every year there is a launch of new technology in the market hence upskilling and adaptability of current talent to new business needs is a challenge in a short span of time also there is limited talent pool available in tier 2 and tier 3 locations limited people mobility due to the affiliation to their native location only 40% of the it talent available meet the skill expectation while for remaining 60% we need to invest in upskilling with experience Kanika Sagar chief people officer HCL Info System says the future clearly lies in jobs that add value to the organization's growth amidst a dynamic environment so skills in area of artificial intelligence machine learning data analytics cyber security cloud and mobility will continue to be in a high demand repeatable task for processes will be taken over by technology like robotic process automation automation to succeed in any organization also requires skills of a different kind apart from technical skills employees also need to have an innovative mindset problem solving skills and chain management sensitivity to leverage automation and unlock its true value for the organization jacob jacob group chief officer HR Columbia Asia Healthcare says that the healthcare industry is rapidly changing both from a clinical and technological perspective the industry is making an all out effort to try and get closer to the patient and meet his her demand in the most appropriate manner with a focus on both cure and care Maninder Kapoor Puri Group Chief People Officer Mastic Limited says the wave of digitalization is catching momentum and has consequently opened the doorway to a pool of opportunity with immense potential to generate revenue create more jobs and boost gdp both public and private sectors are turning towards smart automated solution to improve customer experience optimize cost and add efficiency to the various business processes and operations